I'm Robert Giovanetti on behalf of the Texas Tech Athletic Department. I want to thank the media for being here for today's press conference. And thank you to the fans. How about this? Got the best fans in the world. You guys coming out today. Thank you. I told Coach Wells' family yesterday that don't worry about the weather. It's not, it's not like that all the time here. And today made me a liar. But uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a beautiful day tomorrow. We know that. So glad, so glad to have uh, Coach Wells here, and we'll hear from him in just a little bit. Uh, before we get started, I want to recognize a couple of uh, distinguished guests. We've got the mayor here, Dan Pope, up here in the front. Mayor Pope. And we have the uh, system chancellor. Dr. Ted Mitchell here, Chancellor Mitchell. So we're very excited. We'll hear from a couple of uh, people, then we'll hear from Coach Wells, and the media will get to you guys, and we'll be able to take, uh, take your questions for Coach Wells. So, but we'll get started. Uh, we want to introduce a, a, a gentleman who's been an integral part of all this and all of us at Texas Tech Athletics. Last night, he braved uh, the Carol of Lights, spoke at the Carol of Lights. Uh, we're very lucky to have him here, so please welcome President Lawrence Skubanek. First, let me say thank you to all of you for being here today as we welcome Coach Wells and his family to Texas Tech. And last Sunday, Kirby laid out the qualities and the expectations that would guide him as he looked for a new coach. A person of the highest character and integrity who would lead this university with class, one who has a proven commitment to developing young men as complete individuals who will succeed athletically and academically, a person who will provide leadership in pursuing the vision for this program, and that vision, Kirby said, would be to be elite, and elite means winning and winning the right way. These standards are the characteristics of all of our athletics programs. They are the qualities that resonate with Texas Tech University, with our culture, and that of the, all Red Raiders out there. So Kirby, I want to thank you and congratulate you for bringing to Texas Tech University a person who meets every one of these expectations. Coach Wells, I am proud to welcome you as our new football coach. To you and Jen, your two daughters and your son, and to your mother and to Jen's parents who are here. As you can see, they are a very family-oriented family. I couldn't be more proud to welcome you to the Texas Tech University family and to the Lubbock community. It's a great day and the future of Texas Tech football is even brighter. We have lots of great Red Raiders. One of the, one of the best is Ed Whitaker. He's the former CEO of General Motors and AT&T, and he couldn't be here today, but he wanted to share this. He said, Kirby Hoka continues to show time and again why he is the best athletic director in the country. His vision and resolute decision-making continually sets him apart. And I can tell you, is working in the athletic department day after day, all of us that work here at Texas Tech Athletics, we can see. You guys get to see his decision-making on the big levels like this. We see it every day, each and every day of what he does and how he leads us as an athletic department. Uh, we're all very lucky to have him here. And so please join me in welcoming Kirby Hocutt. Thank you, Robert. Good morning, thank you for being here. I tell you, Red Raider Nation and this community just uh, never ceases to, to amaze me. Thank you for being here this morning for this special announcement and uh, for everything that you do for this program each and every day. You, you're there to support us, to continue to lift us on your shoulders and I just, to everyone here today, I say thank you uh, for your support, your trust and knowing that each and every day we're going to do everything we can to bring pride and distinction to Texas Tech University, to Lubbock, Texas, and West Texas. And uh, we, today's no different. And I'm excited to introduce to you a man who is going to continue to move us forward and to elevate this football program. But before I do that, first I want to say thank you to President Skuvenek. 
when you go through a process like this, you're only going to be as, as strong and as successful as the type of leader that, that you have above you. And I've got the best and, and couldn't do what I do without his support and his vision and, and his trust. And he's the best president that an athletics director could ask to work for. And I'm very fortunate for that. He's exactly right. When we set out to find Coach Wells, we, we checked everything, every box that we talked about last week. But the one thing that we didn't know was it was going to be even sweeter when we introduced Coach Wells because of his team. And his team is led by Jen Wells. And she, I can tell she is the quarterback of the family, and he's lucky that she is the quarterback of the family. She's going to be the great first lady of Red Raider football. And we're so fortunate to have her and to have Jaden and Ella and Wyatt with us. So please join me in welcoming the Wells family. We've got a couple of gymnasts in the family, I hear, so we might look at uh, some, some local gymnastics facilities today and find some, some coaches in the area. I think uh, softball may be a part of, of the family as well, and uh, Wyatt, we, we, we got uh, pregame covered. It's his, it's his job. He's going to catch balls off the net from our kickers and warm-ups. He's going to catch balls off the punter's foot, so uh, we're setting our expectations big for you, Wyatt. You're going to be, be awesome for us. But, um, you know, we do this because of the young people that we represent each and every day and our student athletes. And we've got some of them sitting down here today, members of our football team. And to them, I just say, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. It gives me inspiration every day to do what I do because I get to represent you. And... This is a great group of, of young men that, that I couldn't be more proud of, and I want them to know that the Red Raider Nation couldn't be more proud of you. And um, you go through times like this, and it's, it's challenging, and it's change, but the mark of a champion is how you rise up during a time of adversity. And these young men have handled this adversity with a championship mindset. And it's a and it's a glimpse of what's to come for these young men because of the leader that is behind me. And I can tell you I we can say Coach Wells and I talked for the first time last Sunday afternoon and, and yes, that is true. But I have followed Coach Wells' career for a long time. I've talked to people throughout the industry over years about Coach Wells. He's respected across this country by assistant coaches, head coaches, athletic directors, and commissioners. And I'm going to tell you, Red Raider Nation, right now, reiterate, our expectations are the same, and that's not to be standing here on a Saturday afternoon on Championship Saturday. We expect to be playing football today. Actually, we expect to be kicking off in Arlington, Texas at the Big 12 Conference Championship football game. We're not there today, but we're going to get there, and we're going to get there together, and we're going to get there because we've got the leader behind me who's going to show us the path. Please join me, Red Raider Nation, in welcoming our next head football coach, Coach Wells. I'm excited. What a great day to be a Red Raider. Um, I am uh, very, very honored, very honored and extremely humbled uh, to be your next head football coach and, and have a chance to coach and influence these young men and their teammates um, in a major, major positive way. 
we left a, uh, when I say we, you're going to hear me say that a lot because that's what we're all about. I say we, it's we, these two guys down here, uh, and some more to come. We left a phenomenal program, one that we built for a long time at Utah State. And um, it was a tough, to be real honest, a tough and emotional decision uh, for me. And um, a lot of that was because of the layer that that was my school. And I was an alumni there. Um, and I knew it would take somewhere special, um, somewhere with a vision uh, to where they wanted to go and how they wanted to go. And someone is going to have to paint that picture for me in a very real and vivid way. And these two gentlemen up here did. Um, you know, my family and I feel that the Lord has really led us here. Uh, and this is a special place. I don't know everything about it, but I can't look for, and I'm looking forward. I can't wait uh, to hear all the rest about it. There's a few thank yous, so just hang tight because this is my day, all right? Just for a second, all right? And then it's all about these guys, all right? After that, it's all about y'all. A um, couple thank yous. Uh, President Skubanek, AD, Kirby Hocutt. These guys are um, visionaries and leaders who sold me on the vision of the greatness that Texas Tech football has been and will be all right, in the years to come, uh, starting next year, starting right now. Because this program, this program deserves a team that everybody can go be proud of every single Saturday. And that's our goal. Um, to my Utah State family, okay? Former President Stan Albrecht, former AD Scott Barnes, um, current President Noel Cockett and AD John Hartwell, those guys believed in me. Uh, they believed in me gave me a vision for Utah State, and I truly believe we left that in a better place. And I'm proud of what we did there. Most of all, the thank you goes to my staff and my players at Utah State. I ain't standing here today, I ain't, sorry, I guess that's okay now in Texas, isn't it? Okay. What y'all need to know, the reason I always stop is because that first lady at Red Raider football, she's a speech therapist. Um, she says, Matt, you usually have a word-finding problem. That's the correct thing to say. So she's got an issue because I'm back to ain't y'all and fixing. Um, you see that? Yeah. I'm sorry. I got off on a tangent there. That wasn't in the notes. I didn't write that. Um, those guys, those players... They gave us everything they had. They poured out everything. And I'm not standing here today without them. So, thank you. Um, okay, I got a lot of family here, so I'm going to recognize all of them. All right. Uh, my wife, Jen, Jaden, Ella, and Wyatt. Um, these guys are the inspiration. Uh, they're the reason I get to go chase a dream. Um, and we drag them everywhere, and they left a place that they had, you know, they'd been for eight years, so that was a little hard. So, um, as soon as Wyatt found out he could catch kicks on game day, dude, you better not screw it up either, all right? <laughs> I think everything was okay at that point, so, um, those are my guys and my girls, and, uh, you're gonna see them everywhere, because they're, they're ingrained in this program on an everyday basis. They're around, and as is every one of our coaches' families. I've got my mom, Susie, my in-laws, or outlaws, whatever you want to call them, uh, Dennis and Karen, they know I love them. That's an inside joke, okay? I wasn't supposed to say that either today. All right, my sister Jordan from Crockett, Texas, and their whole family, and my cousin Logan, his wife Kim, um, from that state up north. So thank you guys for coming, okay? And then the last thank you that I got um, is just for all the coaches that have influenced me. Um, Coaching is a special profession, um, and there's a lot of guys that have poured into me, um, especially my high school coaches and my college coaches. And so uh, I say thank you to them uh, for this day. All right. As this process started, um, 
uh, as Kirby said on Sunday, there were three things that initially, I think, got me really fired up about Texas Tech. All right, here they are in no particular order. One of them is the explosive offenses that have been, I think, pretty synonymous with Texas Tech football for, for many years, all right, in many recent years. Um, the current talent on the team, all right, this is a reload, not a rebuild. There's guys here that can play. Um, there's guys here. There's guys here that can play. I quickly researched it. I don't know everything, but I know enough to say these guys deserve the chance to win right now. This senior class coming up deserves the chance to win right now. And I'm going to tell you what, the staff will put together will pour every bit of heart and soul into these guys and this team, uh, not just for this year, but, but for the years to come. And then the last thing is recruiting the state of Texas. Um, that's a no-brainer. I've done it for the vast majority of my career. It's kind of neat to meet all these guys and say, where are you from, and know most of the nicknames of the schools. And there's some, there's some uh, unique ones here in this state. Um, and that, it's just rekindling those relationships. A lot of the guys on the staff uh, that I'm going to hire have extensive Texas recruiting um, backgrounds, and I can't wait to strengthen and re-strengthen really those relationships um, because that's the lifeblood of this program is recruiting. Whether it's Texas high school, it's Texas uh, junior colleges. Um, I've, I've had many texts, and I'm going to say to those guys listening, thank you. Had many texts, calls, just like some of our coaches have already had. And um, this is a special group of high school um, coaches and programs in this state that I'm going to tell you what, they coach them up. They coach them hard. They love them hard. That's just what we do. They strain. And so usually when they get to a, a big-time college program, they already get it. And so I, I can't wait to dive right in. The other thing I think is that I felt really a, uh, that there had a chance to be a connection just with the West Texas people, all right, and what I think Red Raider football probably has been and what it should be, and that's genuineness, it's passion, it's a toughness, it's a blue-collar work ethic, um, it's really it's being overachievers in every sense. Being an overachiever doesn't mean you don't have talent. Being an overachiever means you have talent, okay, that God gave you and that you strain every day. You wake up every day and you strain to maximize it mentally and physically, and that's what this staff will do with these guys. Um, but it's all about the logo, and I said that to the players yesterday, and I finally got one. I didn't earn those stripes yesterday. I didn't think um, maybe after this I'm okay wearing it, um, but I didn't feel like that yesterday. So... Um, and when I say that, I'll explain it. It's all about the logo. And um, one of the things I'll never forget Kirby said is, he said, Matt, in Lubbock and in West Texas, there ain't nothing else. All you see is Under Armour and the double T. That's it. There's no other logos floating around here. And that's pretty cool. That's really cool. And I'm going to tell you what, it takes everybody that can hear me right now. That logo right there is more important than one person. It's more important than a brand new head coach because it ain't all about me. I promise you it's not. It's not about a quarterback. It's not about a kicker. It's not about the best D lineman we have. It's not about a president. It's not about a booster. It's not about an alumni. Okay? It's about every one of us. It's not about a former quarterback, a former coach. Okay? They don't need me when it gets to game day. Trust me. If they're prepared Monday through Friday the right way, they, those coaches are fine. It's not about me. It's about us. It's a we, us, and our program, and it's all about that double T. And so when you say that, no one's bigger than that double T. Those are how I make decisions. Is it better for the double T or is it better for the kid? Okay, it's all about the team. All right, and I promise you that's how we'll base every decision, all right, that we make, whether it's personnel, how we practice, how we treat these kids, because it's all about the team. And when things like that happen and people die to their selfish individual goals, head coach included, all right, players, fans, alumni, supporters, when you die to your selfish goals, those goals are important, okay? Individual goals are really, really important if they're within a team concept and a team atmosphere, then special things take place because special things take place, all right, when these guys are led by themselves. A player-led team can be great. 
Coach-led team can only take a talent so far, okay? We're going to recruit talented young men, and that talent can only take us so far when a coach leads them. But when players lead, I didn't say it was a player-run program. There's a difference. It's a player-led program. Watch out. Special things can happen. I've seen it three times in the last six years at the place I just came from. Special things can happen. Now, because that's what happens internally. Players lead each other. All right? When players lead, then here's what happens. There's player accountability to each other, which is more powerful than a coach to player accountability. When that happens, you win a close game. As soon as you win a close game, you start feeling pretty good about yourself. Then there's confidence. Then there's something called mojo, juju, whatever y'all call it down here, all right? I'll get it right. Give me a second, all right? Hang with me. I said, give me a chance yesterday, right? I'll get it. That stuff starts rolling. When that stuff starts rolling, then here come the winds. Watch out. That's when special things happen. And so this program will be a player-led program. Don't know how long that'll take. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Okay, we're going to attempt to do it year one right out of the gate. I'm excited to implement this program. Let me talk about it. I'm always going to talk about what we do and how we do it. Okay, the how we do it. I'll start with the how we do it, and then I'll talk about what we do. How we do it. We're going to develop the student athlete in three different ways. I told these guys this yesterday. We're going to try to be a champion off the field, champion in the classroom, and then after that, you have a chance to be a champion on the field. Doesn't go the other way around. Champion off the field, giving back. Giving back to the community. What a great community in, in Lubbock and in West Texas to give back because you guys are all in. So we give back. Obviously, the choices you make on a daily basis. Okay, being a champion in the classroom means being an overachiever. Okay, we'll go to class around here. Okay, we're going to graduate. I'll talk about that here in a second. But you be a champion in the classroom because that's two-thirds of your day. If two-thirds of your day you're being a champion and an overachiever, then when you walk into that football training facility in the afternoon or whenever it is, all right, now you have a chance if you have the right talent, all right, and you're coachable. That's all we're going to ask, okay? Coach Patterson says this all the time. I wasn't even planning this. I'm going to steal it. He said, coaches, teach and demand. Players, play and perform, okay? And so that's our jobs, and that's their jobs. All right, we're going to mold guys into who we are. And who we are is similar to what I said that attracted me to Texas Tech. All right? I think we'll be a blue-collar, tough program. And that's toughness is mentally and physically. Okay? That's going to start in January, February, June, July. That's when you become a tough football team and a tough program. January, February, June, and July. All right? And that's done in the weight room. It's done in the strength. It's done out running. All those things that are going to take discipline, mental all right, and physical. All right? The last thing I'll talk about is being football junkies. I'll say it a million times. All right, I want guys that love football and they love their teammates because that stuff's important. All right, now the easy stuff for me, what we are, okay? This is, this is what's fun. Okay, the what we are is offense, defense, special teams, and in the weight room, okay? So what we are on offense, okay, we're fast pace, spread, tempo, no huddle. We're going to go as fast as we humanly can, okay? As fast as Coach Yost can get it out of his, the call out of his mouth is how fast we're going. Okay, we're going to score points. That's the offense's job is to score points. We're going to run the football when we want to run it. Okay, we'll be a physical running team. You cannot win games in the month of November in this league if you don't run the football in November. Okay, I promise you that. Okay. On defense, we base out of the odd front. We'll be a multiple pressure package team that are going to be coached and played in a major aggressive manner. All right? We have um, tweaked. That's the whole thing is when you hire Matt Wells, you're going to hire our team. You hire our program. All right? That's what, that's what gets me motivated, juiced every day is that how these two guys work together and how we all work together with the strength and conditioning because it all works together. All right? I'm going to tell you what. We don't have it figured out by any means, okay? But we're getting closer. How you play defense, how you coach defense, and how you evaluate defense in today's day and age has completely changed. It's completely changed. It ain't all about yards given up anymore. It's about turnovers, all right? It's about fourth down stops. It's about three and outs. Why? Because you got to get the ball back to the offense. Okay, if we're going to play that fast, that's how you got to do it. All right, special teams. 
First and foremost, I'm majorly involved in special teams. It'll be a major part of this program because that's how you win a close game. That's how you can win, win a game you're maybe not supposed to. All right? All you people tell us, tell us we ain't supposed to. I'll get you all in a second. All right? But we are going to be very, very aggressive and very sound in, in special teams. I think you're going to like what you see. And then last thing is in the weight room. All right? End of story, this is the foundation of our success is the weight room. All right? The total body transformation, when you talk about strength training, our conditioning, uh, diet, nutrition, okay, the program that we have, um, I think is very unique and very, very special and very cutting edge. And I think you guys are going to really buy into it and really like it. Um, let me tell you about a vision. The vision for me, it's not a goal, it's just a vision, is to put a program together that all of West Texas and Lubbock can be proud of, that you guys can come to to the stadium, to Jones Stadium every Saturday and say, yeah, we got a fighting chance. These guys are going to play their tail off. We're going to get loud, we're going to get rowdy, and we're going to pack that place. All right, I remember 1996, this guy right here, we rolled into Lubbock, little old Utah State, all right, into Lubbock, and this place was rocking. And I'm going to tell you what, the tortillas were flying. Um, it was crazy. Coach Dykes, uh, Zeppi Lethridge, Byron Hanspard, they boat raced us. I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, they broke that huddle. They were down. That was when tempo was different back then. They huddled up, boom, down, boom, and it was, I mean, that dadgum horse, that needed water. I mean, anyway, I need to get on, don't I? All right, last thing is this. I'm just going to give you a little insight, all right? There will be two promises made in recruiting, two promises made to these kids and their families when we get them here. Two and two only, all right? Number one, we're going to coach them hard, and we're going to love them hard. That's how we roll, all right? I'll define it for you. That's, that's one, by the way. I know some of y'all looking at me like that's two. That's one, all right? Coach them hard, love them hard. Coach them hard. We're going to set a standard, all right, on what it takes to be a Red Raider at every single position because it's a little bit different. We're going to define it. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach it first, all right? Then we're going to motivate it. We're going to discipline it. You know what? We may have to drop down here and reteach it again, okay? Because guys learn different. Everybody learns different. That's fine. What we ain't going to do is we ain't, ain't going to lower it. We ain't going to lower it. There's the standard. That's coaching them hard every single day, all right, by multiple people, weight room, academics, how you act in the community, all right, and then obviously how you play between the lines. That's important. Loving them hard, that's pretty easy too. That's, that's one arm around the neck, and that's two arms around the neck, and that's telling the kid, doesn't matter what his skin color is, white, brown, brown, black, it don't matter. In state, out of state, I don't care. It's, it says, love you. We're going to say it and we're going to mean it. It'll be weird for him for a while. All right, y'all y'all buy in eventually. All right, but we're going to love him hard and coach him hard. And then sometimes it's a size 13 Under Armour, right? Size 13 Under Armour up there, butt. All right, so it's all together. That's it, two promises, Okay. I just want y'all to know, Red Raiders, okay, we're going to be your team. We'll be your team. To all the football alumni out there, we need you. Talked to a couple of them yesterday that I've had great relationships with for a long time, all right, and I told them, we're here. Our doors are open. We're going to be accessible. I want you here. I want you here at spring ball. I want you here to come through the complex, all right? I want some of those NFL quarterbacks to come back and throw around here, all right? So I want it to be that because we're your program. All right, we're going to play for the guys that came before us, I promise you, every single Saturday. All right, and um, we'll connect. We'll connect. Our staff will connect. I'll connect, whether it's, it's fans, it's alumni, it's boosters, or it's the former players. And how you do that is one handshake, one hug at a time. That's all it takes. So you're going to get a total program with us. When you, when you hire me, you hire us. Okay, that's who we are. We're a we, us, and our program. And I say we, it's Coach Yost, it's Coach Patterson, it's Coach Scholes, the head strength coach, and the rest of the guys that we have, how we do it in the community, how we do it academically. And um, all I got to say is wreck them. Good? All right.
Okay, this is a press conference, so we're going to take questions from the media. We've got Riley here with the mic. We've got Katie in the back with the mic. Katie, raise your hand. There you go. And identify yourself so Coach Wells knows who you are, and let's get going. Coach Wells, uh, John Sokoloff with Fox 34 News. First things Hi, first, how do, how do you like Lubbock so far? It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I tell you, the, the biggest thing that, that I see is the facilities. Um, the town, I haven't seen everything. I Actually, Jen's seen more of the town than I have. Um, just the facilities and the layout. And I am, you know, I think it, uh, you know, just to hear the plans that are coming up, I think it's, uh, um, it gives these guys every opportunity to be successful in every way of their life if they choose to be, and they will. But I think, you know, what's really neat to see the stadium and, and uh, visualize um, touchdowns and, and people celebrate, and that's what I was looking at when I was looking at it over yesterday. And uh, the indoor facility is unbelievable. Um, and just the, the, uh, the vision that these guys have, and you see what's going on around here. Um, already had, you know, some of the, the coaches here reach out to me, and it starts to make it feel like family. Kind of like I thought it was going to be. And what's the key to really... You get two in a row around here? <laughs> I'm just kidding you. I like you. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the key to really just build a, a new locker room's trust, a locker room that really was heavily invested in the last head coach here? What's the key to really just build their trust? Well, I, I'll share uh, what I told them yesterday is I, I mentioned the, the, the team we left was special. They're going to be good next year. Um, you know, I sat in every one of those living rooms. Those are my guys, okay? You know what? I chose these guys. Now they're my guys, okay? And I'm going to win them over one handshake at a time. Coach Wells, Pete Christie back here. Way back here, Coach. Hey. Channel 11, welcome to Lubbock Thank and you. this awesome city. Uh, you had your name floated around for other jobs. You had Utah State, which was so special. What pulled you in the end to come to Lubbock, Texas and Texas Tech? Honestly, those three things that I said earlier. Um, you know, you watch Texas Tech football. You know, I get, you get to see, we don't see many games because of our schedule, but um, you see, you know what's going on here offensively. Uh, I know absolutely what we do on offense is going to be um, – really close to being a lot more same as than different. Um, you know, I think it's the current talent. It's the players right now, and it's recruiting the Texas, Texas football. You don't have to go very far to, to get your guys. And um, I think all of that is conducive to having great success. And so that's what I knew from the outside. Okay, once I got, you know, a vision to the inside of the, the visionary, um, you know, thoughts of, of both President and Kirby, um, I think that's what ended up selling me. Uh, Coach Wells, Rob Verbe here, Fox 34 and Double T 97.3. Um, love what you said about player-led program. I think that's true at every level in any sport. Can you share an example when you saw that happen during your stay at, at Utah State where you knew if you got them ready to play Monday through Friday that Saturday they were going to take care of business? Yeah, I think when you look at that stuff, it's, it's – um, you know, you're trying to help teach leadership. We have a leadership council, a, a players committee um, of those captains. You're trying to invest in those guys. Uh, I can't give you one specific moment, um, but that, that is stuff that's built through the offseason, through relationships with these guys. You get in games. Um, you know, obviously you look at it and go, oh, it flipped on a win. It, it didn't. But I think there's things that are evidence of a player-led program. Um, come out of meetings, um, you're around the office, and you see a bunch of guys bringing their lunch in, and they're bringing others in, they're watching tape, okay? I've already seen some early examples of that just in the last 24 hours. Um, they want to know, they're hungry. Um, they're bringing teammates with them. Um, you know, they're holding teammates accountable for actions off the field, for um, the way they practice. That's a big thing, is, is you talk about respecting the game of football, respecting your opponent, uh, that became a kind of a, a big theme for us as the season went on um, for us last year is, is respecting your opponent. And I believe you, how you respect your opponent is respect the game of football. And that's what you do on Monday through Friday. 
And if you do everything right in the, the way you practice, okay, in the way you invest, the way you get your you know, training room, you get your academics done early in the week so you're not scrambling at the end of the week, all that kind of stuff, the way you practice, you only earn the right to win on Saturday. You don't deserve the right. You only have the chance to do it. But if you don't do that Monday through Friday, now you take your talent. If you're more talented or you're less talented than the team you're playing, sometimes, you know, oftentimes you can't, um, you know, you can't control that. But now you minimize talent. Now you're equal. Now you're just putting a win and loss. You're saying, all right, roll the ball out. Hope it balls, bounces our way. I, that ain't going to be. We're not going to roll like that around here. Uh, you got to give your chance, yourself a chance to win on Saturday by what you do during the week, and your players got to be a part of it. So it's holding them accountable. It's our coaches holding them accountable, and then you start hearing players talk like we talk. Then you're like, okay, something special is about to happen. Hey, Coach, Jared Johnson inside the Red hey, Raiders. Uh, you mentioned your experience recruiting in Texas. Can you mm -hmm. give us a little more insight about you and your staff recruiting here? Yeah. I have, uh, I've recruited this, this state. I would just, you know, shoot, I have to do the math. I'm from Oklahoma. Remember, I'm slow. Um, <laughs> the vast majority of my career, most of my career, I've spent time in East, East Texas, mainly Dallas, the Metroplex, uh, North Texas. I, you know, lost a guy to Lubbock Monterey about 10 years ago. I remembered that when I landed yesterday. I'm like, oh, last time I was here, I got beat on a recruit, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, we've got guys, I mean, Keith Patterson's high school coach, Allen, Allen Texas. Um, these guys have all recruited Texas. David Yost has never coached in Texas, but he's recruited quarterbacks all over the state. And there's a lot of guys that know him. Um, we are, we are going to have a lot of guys with Texas ties as well as Texas recruiting ties. And you know what? Recruiting is about relationships. It's not the hometown you grew up in. Trust me on that one. All right? It's time spent. These guys want to know that you care, all right, first, and then they want to know, are you going to offer my kid? Are you going to recruit my kid? They're just like players. People are like that. They don't care what you know until they know how much you care. And that recruiting's about relationships. And trust me, um, there'll be a lot of, I mean, I've already had a lot of people reach out, but um, that's what fires me up is because uh, the opportunity to recruit this state, the respect that I have for this state, for the Texas high school coaches and the junior college coaches, um, it's honestly, it's second to none here. And then quick follow up. Uh, how quickly are y'all going to hit the trail quick, but I'm not going to rush it because the number one most important thing right here at the very, very beginning is these guys. All right. Um, the ones in your locker room, they're the most important ones. <laughs> we'll always take care of in house. Our, our guys in our locker room, most important. Um, the ones that are committed are absolutely probably 1B, all right? And so uh, we're, we're going to be, you know, we got some, uh, we'll get going quick, um, but we're not going to rush it, okay? Those guys, the, the high school coaches that I've talked to, they know we'll be out by mid to week or so. Coach Eric Kelly, KOBK, we're here. Here, left. Hey. hey. Uh, Sorry. For those commits in this year's class who – Committed to Cliff and the old guard. What's that pitch you're going to give them to keep them committed? To Texas? I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, those recruits that are currently committed and maybe thinking, oh, do I stay? Do I go? What's that pitch you give them to keep them committed to Texas Tech? Well, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, you're going to have to, first of all, we're going to have to get to know them. And they're going to have to get to know us. And if that's a relationship that wants to continue once we both figure that each other out, then absolutely, let's roll. And um, I just think it's about getting out and knowing them. Obviously, I've already taken a peek at them. Um, there's some guys that we already know about, um, some guys that we already tried to recruit, all right? Um, and so there's some relationships, actually, that some of my guys on my staff already have with those guys. But again, I think it's mutual. There's got to be a mutual interest on both sides because uh, we, want, want, we only want guys around here that want to be here. Okay, because we'll take these guys right here. We'll take the ones that want to be here. All right, we'll go find some more, and then we'll get rolling. Coach David Collier from the ABC here in Lubbock, Texas. Right What's there. your name? David Collier. Hey, David. Nice to meet you, Coach. Um, we know that Coach Yost is here. Coach Patterson's here. There's been reports of a lot of your offensive staff coming here. Can you share 
Any specifics on others that will be joining your staff? Yeah, I'll just confirm this. David Yost will be our offense coordinator and quarterback coach. Keith Patterson will be our defense coordinator. Uh, Dave Scholes will be our head strength and conditioning coach and uh, with others to be named later. Handled that good, didn't I? And a follow-up, how quickly would you like to have those guys in place given the recruiting talk you just uh, were discussing? Quick. All right, don't worry. We've got a plan in place. They're, we've got some planes ready, don't we? A plane. Okay. That's a solid question. I'll, I'll announce them quick. Coach, Bailey Burmaster, also the ABC here in Hi, town. Bailey. How are you? Good. Great. <laughs> trust a very big part of this, especially getting the trust from your student athletes. In the short 24 hours you've been here, what have your players taught you? What, what have these guys taught me? I think they're just hungry. I think they just want somebody to coach them and love them. Um, I, you know, both these coordinators talked yesterday. I sat in both, both unit meetings. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you what, here's the first thing. I don't know if they taught me this, but that's the first thing I noticed. And there's little things that these two guys and myself um, will, will pick up on, and we're also going to demand little things. I walked into that room, and I'm going to tell you what, every one of them were, were sitting up. I had eye contact with every one of them. I didn't see one guy looking down. I didn't see one guy looking up. And you know what? Had they been, I still chose them, but they weren't. And so that tells me they're hungry. And I would assume that uh, that, hungry, that hunger will transform to passion for what they do. Because you've got to love what you do, man. This thing's too hard. It takes too much time for administrators, for coaches, for players, you better love what you do and you better have a passion about it. Um, but I just saw, I think, a hunger. I, I saw an attentiveness. Uh, coach mentioned to me, um, Matt, they're sitting straight up. They, were, they had you dialed in. Um, that tells me they care. If they care, you got a fighting chance. Coach Don Williams from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal newspaper. Hi, Don. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, your uh, last six years at Utah State, obviously you had the three seasons where you won at least nine games, and you had three seasons that were not so good. Kirby said the other night that he thought your variety of experiences made you better, and in visited with Todd Berry from the AFCA, he said that he kind of said something similar, that the places that you had been and having maybe to do more with less helped you. Um, how did you? What did you kind of learn through through all those different stops, and particularly over these last six years, where you experienced a lot of success early, then kind of lost the way, and sure. then got it back this year? Sure. Well, I think um, I personally, we collectively, a um, little bit of product of all those successes and all those struggles. Um, the places that I've been um, was always the, the have-nots. They were always the guys that, you know, the places that didn't have this or didn't have that. But I'm going to tell you what, we had players that played with the chip on their shoulder, and they had a why. First of all, you better have a why. Why do you do it? And you play that way. And I think that's something that's always been ingrained in me um, is we're going we're gonna to strain our guys to be uh, overachievers. When I say that, I'm going to transition right into the last six years, like you mentioned. Um, we've had great success, and we had – um, especially one year where, where we struggled. And that was a culmination of probably several things. And I'm going to tell you what, that December, I'll never forget it, December of 2016, that was the worst month of my life. It was horrible. Okay? That's the only bowl game we missed in the eight years I was at Utah State. Okay? That's the golden, right now it's the golden age of Utah State football. 120-some years at Utah State football, the last eight years we've been in seven bowl games. And uh, it's, it's a remarkable run, something I hope that they can – they can keep up, but that one year we didn't go, um, it was tough. And I'm going to tell you what, me and a couple of the, the really the close confidants in, of, of our program, um, you had a lot of heart-to-hearts. And um, to be real honest, Don, everything that came full circle, I had the biggest resolve that it would never happen again on my watch, ever. And I mean, we turned over every rock, whether it was recruiting, it was development, how we practiced, how we recruited, um, what kind of kids we're recruiting, um, how everything, scheme, OD, all my coaches, the personnel. Um, and when we came out of that, and I mean it was extensive and exhaustive, um, 
came out of that, number one, there was a whole lot more same as than change. And when I say that, our core values and our plan to win didn't change because I still believed in them after thoroughly dissecting it. Uh, the, the recruiting foundation, the recruiting um, areas, um, the development, all that stuff did not change. Our scheme on defense didn't change. I made one major decision from a schematic standpoint, and that was to hire David Yost, all right, and to go faster and to be more dynamic on offense, all right? I also learned some things about myself as a head coach. Um, be real frank, and I don't mind saying it, I, I wouldn't spend enough time with the players. I'm a guy that meets with these guys constantly, um, especially in season. Two-minute meeting, 10-minute meeting, doesn't matter. Half a dozen a day. Okay, you add that up over a week and a month, that's the entire team, one-on-one. -on -one. And it ain't behind a desk. It's somewhere else in the complex. It's go, let's go take a walk. Um, to be real honest with you, I wasn't doing a very good job of that. Apparently, I'd done a good job of it at the beginning. Maybe we did it a little bit better the last, last year or so. But it's humbling. Um, it's hard. And you have all the resolve in the world that it's never going to happen again um, on my watch. And so that was something... Uh, that was bad, but out of something bad came something really good because we, you know, two more bowl games and a 10-win season, and those guys are about to go win number 11, and uh, that's remarkable. So proud to be a part of that, uh, proud to learn, and uh, honestly um, be humbled. And we've seen that. Uh, I saw that you were actually born in South Carolina, but uh, Salisaw's what you consider your hometown. Right. Uh, what what? When did you go from one place to the other? How many years did you live in Oklahoma? Well, I was only 18 months old, so that's hard to remember. So, um, no, uh, my dad was a dentist in the Army, um, and he was stationed at Fort Jackson there in Columbia. We were born, my baby, uh, baby sister, uh, younger, oh, she's watching, I'm in trouble. Um, she, uh, she's a year younger than me. When she was born, um, parents moved to Oklahoma. My dad grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, wanted to raise a family. Um, Salisaw my whole life uh, until I left for college. So that's it. Does that answer your question? I'm done. I can go all day. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Just a couple of I'm glad I scripted that Raider power. It went off really well. Good job by everybody here. Nicely done. Uh, final thoughts, you can get some food here before you leave. I did want to mention, too, we, we mentioned some of the uh, VIPs here. We don't want to overlook Coach Tim Tadlock here in the house. Coach Tadlock. <laughs> Three College World Series when, since he's been here. Not bad. Uh, if you want to buy some tickets behind the saddle tramps so you can get some tickets. If you don't, I mean, Coach Wells didn't get you fired up. Uh, get your tickets ready for next season. We're looking forward to that. And uh, now, for the first time ever, we're going to finish this off, and uh, Coach Wells is going to enjoy the Matador song. So please join us in, for the Matador song. Surely somebody can sing an a cappella, right? We got the Raider Pyre. Let's go.
Thank you for coming. Wreck them. Watch the basketball team today at 1 o'clock. Thank you very much.